Good morning and welcome back to Craddock. I should have been at Pontypool today, but I couldn't get anywhere near the course. The town was closed for a marathon and there was hundreds of cars milling up and down trying to get past all the roadblocks. My sat-nav was doing its nut because I wouldn't turn where it wanted me to turn because I couldn't. But anyway, we have sunshine, no wind, and of course this beautiful view again. So without the wind, I've got an opportunity to try and play smart golf and score better than last time. However, I haven't had a club in my hand since last time. And last time was 10 days ago, so it might be a bit ropey. See you on the tee. Well, without the wind, there's no need for driver, so I'm starting with a three wood. But when you haven't played for a while and you're not confident and there's people watching you on the patio, it doesn't always end in a good result. That was awful and very short. Five iron to the front edge. Even though it's in the rough, this is manageable. But what I had forgotten is there's a bunker down there and I didn't hit it in the right direction anyway. Ah, the memory's getting bad. So not what you would call a particularly smart start to the round of golf. That's on the green, just but we're going to make bogeys and even an opening bogey isn't anything to get upset about. It's just one of the ones that we will make today. And as I say, putting can be very difficult when you play on your own. You don't get to see anybody else. But that was decent. Off to the par 5 second. This is wide enough for my driver just like last time. This time we'll try and avoid hitting any trees. Well, that's a good sign. Makes you wonder why I didn't on the, do it on the first. Ball below the feet, bunker on the right. I've got to give myself enough space for this ball to turn. So aiming well left is smart. Not squaring the club face is not smart. And the dreaded 30, 33 yarder. Now I play this very similar to a greenside bunker, except with a much squarer face. There's hardly anything open on this. I'm still going to take a lot of sand, but it's going to come out lower and it's going to release. No spin on that one. And we get it up onto the top tier of the green. It's not much of a tier, but at least we got it up there. And, oh, I could have used that. Well, I was hoping I'd be on the back tier of this tee box so I could see the green, but we're still forward. It's only 91 today, which means it's tight to the water. So we've just got to trust the yardage and, more importantly, trust ourselves. And we're just past pin high but I am hitting it right today. It never rains, but it pours. A decent putt, and that is a decent putt. You know, when you get it inside a dustbin lid, that's a good putt. Don't criticize yourself for being two feet away. And the planting here between greens and tees is rather nice. Three wood, and I'm more confident. I'm not going at the middle of the fairway. I'm going to hit this as tight to the trees as I can on the right, which will cut off some yardage up the hill. And that's perfect. Green is low on the left, high on the right. So the smart thing to do is leave that back left flag alone and play right, but I didn't get all of that, so we're left with one of these. And that is steamed. But the thing to do is to concentrate on what you want to do and finish it off. First par five. 
and I know I'm not set up correctly. I couldn't get comfy over this. And that's in the next fairway. Now this is not smart in the slightest. And that's skinny. Anywhere it's not a bunker. In there? Yeah. It's you just shy, I think. I think you called it. 81. Gap wedge. And that's fat. You know, I'm just playing hockey down this hole. And there's a very, very good reason for it. A little 9-iron chip and run. Hit it into the bank. Let it pop up. Didn't bounce left as I thought it would. And again, you, you're staring down a bogey. And sometimes you just can't avoid them. But I have not played this hole smart at all. It has been pretty disgusting. Well, it's a good job there's a nice view from this tee box. All round out there is, uh, is lovely. You really need to come here and see it. I need to calm down. I just realised why the group in front is so slow. They have more players than bags of clubs, so there's one guy who's dashing about all over the place trying to borrow clubs from someone else's bag. And, needless to say, it's slowing them down. All four of them now are stood in the fairway together, holding hands. Why does this happen to me? Does this happen to you? Do you get numpties like this on your course? I mean, they're just running around and not moving at all. Guys stood in the fairway, two, three, four. They're just not playing golf. They're just, I don't know. How am I supposed to beat last, my last score here with this? Right, I've paid a green fee. I need to focus. I've spent a lot of money on fuel today. I'm not going to let this round disappear because of a very slow four ball who won't call me through. That's down the bank. That's in the rough. But there are compensations. i got to aim a very long way left to allow the ball to go to the right. Don't fight it. You cannot fight the slope, you have to go with the slope, play with the slope, and use the slope. So that ball is back on the green, I haven't lost it well right like I did on the second hole, and now it's just a matter of lagging. And I've done better than that in the past. So again, it's down to concentration. Don't get upset about it, work at it. Off to the par three in a moment. There's the little wall with the flowers below it on the other side. The lovely house and their nice gardens. Flag is cut front right today and there is a bunker front right. So no matter how much we would love a hole in one, the smart thing to do is just to play left of it. And that is left of it. Yeah, even from 115, a par is a fine score. Don't ever beat yourself up for making a par. And again, a good putt. You see, you can be too hard on yourself. That was never online, but it's still a good putt. Wonderful. Now the short par four with the water down in the middle of the fairway. I've guessed at a five iron here. Because I hit seven iron downwind last time. And was only about eight yards short of the water. But that is not a good enough strike. <sighs> it's proving very hard for me to get the club back to the ball today. Seems to be turning through it and leaving the club behind and open. Doesn't help all this hanging around. Having a four ball with only three bags of clubs. And they're rank beginners. You can tell that because they're leaving their bags 
at the front of the green or in they just chip on and leave the bag so when they've eventually finished they've got to come back to the bag and circumnavigate the green yeah I'm, I'm really struggling to get going because I'm just standing back right flag and the balls below the feet so the smart thing to do again is don't fight the slope use it to get the ball to the flag just like that and even though that was out of the rough that did spin back down the slope a fair bit and another lovely putt it's inside the dustbin lid so it is a lovely putt now the long par 4 3 wood proved too short last time so we go in with driver and a slightly different line, a little further left, keep it away from those trees. That's perfect. Now on a downslope, you've always got a little bit of a guess of how much loft to take off. So I guessed at a 7-iron. And although I struck it well, it wasn't enough club. It should have been the 6, and it's taken a bounce to actually get it on the front of the green. Another lag. And that's awful. And that's going to happen. Especially when your mind is wandering to the next tee and you're listening to people hitting six, seven, eight, even nine tee shots on one tee. And you're thinking, I'm going to be stuck behind these forever. Drinks fountain, plenty of those on the course. Benches, there's always a bench somewhere. Shrubs, mature trees. The toilet's behind nine with a beautiful little stretch of garden planted up. You're, everywhere you walk on this course is absolutely delightful. Somebody planned this planting a long time ago and they planned it well and they look after it driver up the 10th got to get over the ditch there's a drainage ditch across if you remember that's gone left but it's fine I'm taking a pitch and wedge here simply because it's rough and I feel I need a little less loft and a heavier club than say my gap wedge to get through it and that's spot on spot on it's nine feet perhaps or eight feet even shame about the putt right on to 11 if you remember I hit a hybrid this time I'm going three wood I want to get further down the hill that's a smart thing to do to get further down get closer to the green when you're going to be on a down slope but bizarrely, I am shorter than the hybrid. I'm guessing after about 10 days rain, the ground is a fair bit softer. And it's surprising when you're coming downhill how sometimes you don't get the extra yardage that you think you will. I have only just hit the green. It plugged even, so that shows how soft it's been. And another excellent putt. Now this is a back right flag and you should leave it alone because of the drop off if you go too far. But sometimes the number is just right and then you take it on.
just a five wood today as the driver got me in trouble last time. Shop tracers didn't like this, but that is a low lefty sort of shot, but it's turned out all right. You know, I've finished up in a decent spot. If only I hadn't have been stood here for ages. Stood here for fucking ages. Not a bad pitch. That's on the front. Uh, oh, it's rolling. And now it's off again. So I know the hole has been a disaster, but your score is reliant on this wedge. So you have to shut out all the nonsense that got you here in the first place. And concentrate. And then stick it to a couple of feet somewhere where you can just knock it in easily. I mean, I am steaming at this round, the amount of time I spent standing around, but I can't let it ruin my day. The next par five, this time I'm aiming correctly, better than the other par five that's right next to it. We can certainly make a score here. Now this isn't the best shot I could take on. But it's a par 5. Which means I can hit a poor shot and still make a par. And sometimes you have to make a calculated gamble on a par 5. When you can actually reach it. Even if that had been a little worse... I could still make a five and even with this front flag and I'm in the rough I can open the face I can play a flop shop I've still got my birdie chance and if I don't get the birdie I've still got my par five and not every par five you can make a calculated gamble on but if you can then do so and I mean look at this I've got what 10 or 11 feet from a bird just a slight misread. So the calculated gamble did not hurt me. Well, it's not downwind today, so I don't have to worry about running off into the trees on the right. But I do want to hug the left-hand side a little bit better than last time. And that's perfect. Flag is on the right, next to a steep drop-off. So, of course, we stay left. That's the smart thing to do. So, a little fade with the 7 iron towards the bunker and sliding away towards the green. And we're just fine. And another putt that was slightly over borrowed, slightly under hit, but it's inside that dustbin lid again. It's a par, so it's a good putt. I'm going driver over the corner. I'm not really sure what club I should be hitting, what direction I should be hitting. And of course I'm relying on my memory from into the wind last time, into three or even four clubs of wind. And that was certainly the wrong club for the direction I hit it in. But, you know, sometimes you learn things the hard way, don't you, on a golf course? Just a wedge in. Now, it's quite funny. When I want to hit just slightly less than a wedge, oh, I just can't judge it. But that's down to lack of play, lack of practice. And sometimes, you know you're not going to hit the ball how you want to. So you've got to take it on the chin. Well, that turned right when I figured it would turn left, so my green reading isn't very good. And I've got this much for bogey. Again, you know, in a round of golf, you're going to get a disaster hole. That could easily have been a double, and I managed to get away with it. 
5 iron at the left hand bunker with a fade to the middle of the green. That seems to be the sensible shot for me. And all I've done is hit it dead straight. I can't seem to keep the face open when I want it open and I can't keep it square when I want it square. But you've always got a wedge and a putter. You know, you've got to stay level-headed if you're going to make pars on a day when you're struggling. Now we go off to 18. It's out with a three wood, same as last time. Let's hope for a better finish and not a double. Cheerio.